Today on Hands On Photography, you, our wonderful listeners, took me down memory lane with some good old feedback. (laughs) Ah, man, good memories. I cannot wait to share this show with you. Y'all stay tuned. This is Twit. Well, what's going on, everybody? I am Matt Pruitt, and this is Hands On Photography here on Twit TV. Hope y'all are doing well. I'm unbelievable as always. And on today's episode, I want to sit down and go through a piece of feedback that I got from you, our loyal Hands On Photography listeners, and uh, share it with everybody else that's out there uh, checking out the show each and every week. This is going to be fun. But before we get into that, I want to say welcome to all of our new listeners and viewers and subscribers. Thank you very much. And if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and hit subscribe on whatever podcast application you're enjoying this on. We're available on good old Apple Podcasts and Spotify and even available on YouTube. Uh, We have a YouTube channel, so you can go ahead and subscribe there and like all of those videos and do all of that magical algorithmic stuff. Uh, But if you can't quite figure out all the subscription options, just go on over to our website, twit.tv slash hop. That's twit.tv slash H-O-P for hands on photography. All right. With all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started with this week's episode. Okay, so as of recording this, this has been, I think, seven years, I think it was 20, 2014, way back in the day. Uh, I had recently started, well, not recently, I started a smartphone photographers community uh, back when Google Plus was in its heyday. And man, that community really did teach me a lot from a photography standpoint um, and social standpoint as well, because um, I was able to basically learn how to get the most out of my smartphone camera, uh, regardless of what the the type of phone that it was at the time. And, um, you know, I shared tips with the community members and the members shared tips with me. It was a lot of fun. And um, I'll never, ever forget those days and, and cherish them and take a lot of the conversations that we had back then in our weekly hangout on air uh, and, and apply it to a lot of the stuff that we do today in photography. And yeah, I just, going through this week's feedback and email, it just made me think back to the days of the good old smartphone photographers community. But anyway, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and take take a look at uh, this week's feedback here. So let's switch my screen. There we go. So this one says, hello, I got a new Google Pixel 4a and here are some pictures taken with it. Uh, Pixel is now my main camera since I usually take pics quickly without planning and usually don't edit them. I really appreciate Hop and have watched all episodes. I am not a native English speaker and usually express myself in other means than writing. I give my consent to freely edit and review these photos. P.S. Hey, Aunt, thank you for the latest episode with the Pixel 4a. <laughs> now, this message, it came from uh, Mr. Miko. I thought I would have had that on the screen, but Mr. Victor will put it up there right now. So thank you, <laughs> Mr. Miko. Uh, this this was a, a very kind email. I really do appreciate that support. And uh, man, this email is old. I have to admit it's, this email was back from December of 2020. So yes, I'm still playing catch up, but I am going through them. I promise you that. Uh, but yeah, that email was just, it just touched my heart and he attached some images to it. So let's go ahead and take a look at those images here inside of Lightroom. Okay, so we are now inside of Lightroom and these are the images from Miko and I hope I'm pronouncing your name properly, sir. Um, appreciate all the emails that you send and being a part of the uh, community. Uh, but this is the first image here shot with this Pixel 4a, the same smartphone that I use. And uh, this is just an alleyway. It's nighttime. Um, got some buildings, looks like some high rise buildings on the left side of the frame. And part of the, the, the um, building is lit up, of course, because it's nighttime. So you don't want all of the lights on because nobody's there. But you do want some of the lights to be lit up just from a safety standpoint. 
Uh, so this one, it, it's pretty interesting look to it. it. This one didn't quite strike me the way the next image did, but I did want to go ahead and show it off on the screen just to uh, give you all a quick look. Now, the next image. Hmm. OK, hold on. Before we look at it, this this next image I'm going to show you, this is just the epitome of how powerful smartphones are when it comes to photography these days. Uh, there's a lot of AI and stuff that is being built in to make it just simply easier for the average person to just pick it up and snap a photograph. But if someone has some intention with their photography, they can really create some great shots with their phones. And it doesn't matter what smartphone it is. It doesn't have to necessarily be the latest and greatest iPhone Pro model, whatever they call that, or or Samsung's latest. It, it really doesn't have to be the latest and greatest. Uh, again, it's just a lot of AI that's built in, a lot of just just pretty capable um, processing that's happening there. And if you have some intention, you can really pull off some nice shots. So again, that makes me think back to the smartphone photography community days and just, you know, we were all pretty passionate about our photography and we were just as passionate about it. Um, regardless of the camera we we were using, including our smartphones. OK, off my soapbox, back to Lightroom. <laughs> OK, so that's the first shot. But this second shot here, this one here, man, this one just hmm, just really, really got my attention and blew my mind. Uh, this is a building. I'm not sure what the building is, but it looks rather official, has a lot of different little arches uh, and pillars. The windows have arches above them. It's well lit. There's a looks like a turn at the top. Uh, the street next to the building uh, is all a bit of the uh, brick and cobblestone, and it looks like it has rained this evening. This is a nighttime shot. So it looks like it has rained because the the cobblestones and walkway and concrete and so forth all around it is it's got some water uh, all over it. So it's just it's just a really cool look. It almost makes me think of something you would see inside of like a graphic novel or something like that. Um, now, he mentioned he doesn't do a lot of editing and post processing, and that's fine. That's totally fine. This picture works as it is. But of course, I get a little bit nitpicky at times because of my own personal visions. And I wanted to play around with this shot. And since he did say in the email uh, that, that I could play around with this shot on air, that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to pull out my good old Wacom tablet here and my mouse. And I'm going to go to work on this because this is not much that I would do to it, but there are some things that I would do just to enhance this photograph. So first things first, I'm going to always make sure my horizon line is nice and straight. So we just straighten it out just a touch. He was almost lined up <laughs> from a horizon standpoint. Nicely, nicely done. And then I, I since this is a nighttime shot, I am thinking moody and cold, you know, a bit of a chill, but I still want to have some sort of that that comic book feel to it, that graphic novel feel to it. And uh, I got plenty to work with here. So I'm going to take the color temperature, um, the white balance that is, but take the temperature and cool it off some here on the upper right of Lightroom. So if I pull it all the way back to the left, it makes it really, really blue. I don't want it that blue. We just want to give it just a nudge of it. OK, so I'm going to take it back right along. Minus 18 or so. So that's not too bad. OK, uh, I like to have some more contrast and clarity there because we got all of these wonderful highlights showing up in the in the in the concrete and the cobblestone and so forth where all the rain is hitting it so it's, it's just beautiful highlights there but i want to separate those highlights and you know with a little bit of contrast so i'm going to push the contrast up on this image and if you want you could also use the curves menu but this contrast slider is just this easy and i'll push it i'm gonna push it extreme just just to start so we'll push it all the way up within its stream and we see that that does not work. We lose all of the detail in the roof of the building here at the top and all of the extra um, dark areas of the scene have gone almost black. 
and you lose detail in those spots because, you know, smartphones, they don't have the same dynamic range a higher end camera would have. So we'll, we'll go ahead and pull that contrast back just a little bit. OK, so we put it about 40, 45. That that works right there. And now I want to maximize the details a little bit more. And to do so, I can play around with texture, play around with clarity, play around with sharpening. And now typically I do my sharpening inside of Photoshop, but I won't do it on this particular episode. I'm just going to scroll down to the sharpening um, slider here and move it just a nudge, just so I can make sure this masking feature gets activated. Now what the masking feature does, I believe I've spoken about this before on the show, the masking feature, uh, the more you adjust it, it tells Lightroom when it does its actual sharpening to make sure it's sharpening more of the edges of the things in your scene, not the whole scene. So if I was to hold down Alt or Option on my keyboard and drag this masking slider, you will notice it starts to go from white to black in certain areas. And what it's going to do is start to sharpen more so along those white areas of the image. Because if I just left it here, it's going to try to sharpen everything. OK, but I don't want it to sharpen the sky. I want it to sharpen more around the streets, more around the building and all of those beautiful details. So we'll just push it up roughly about 80, 89 or so. Good to go. And then we can take our sharpening slider and just push that. And if you hold down the alt or option key while you're moving the sharpening slider, you'll get a little bit more details there like so. OK, so. We're getting a little bit more detail there, but we can dive in a touch more by going to our clarity and texture. Now, the clarity slider here, it tends to give you a little bit more contrast, which is OK. So it's going to introduce some more black into the scene to help separate colors. So we're going to push that up to about 16 or so. Yeah, that's looking better. And then the texture is more like a high pass filter where it really just attacks the edges even more so than the sharpen does. It's more of a high, high frequency. There we go. I like that. I think this is looking good, but I'm not done yet. There's one more thing that I would like to attempt on here, and that's pull out the adjustment brush. And let's give it a little bit of a glow. Um, for some reason, I just want to see a bit more of a glow uh, coming from this uh, the, the lit scene, but also as if it was coming from the building a little bit more. I don't know why it just that's just what's in my head. So I'm going to hit K on my keyboard or click the adjustment brush up here in the upper right. And we'll change the effect. Let's start with. Let's see, let's start with uh, exposure. Yeah, let's start with exposure just for the heck of it. And I'm going to click right here in the center. Roughly the center of the frame. OK. No, actually, let's undo that. I got another idea. We're going to make our brush smaller, so we're going to shrink it down like so. OK, now we're going to click in the center of the frame. OK, and then I'm going to move my mouse down or move my Wacom tablet down to about pretty much the bottom of this this frame just directly below it and then i'm going to increase the brush size let's make that brush size a lot larger even if it goes off the screen it's okay so we're just going to make it a lot larger maybe right about here okay so now hold it i'm going to hold down shift and then i'm going to click one time and that's going to give us a brush stroke there. So if I turn on the actual mask where you can see where I brushed by clicking O, you'll notice that the brush stroke started as a, a bit of a narrow brush and then it starts to get wider the further it comes down to the bottom of the frame. And I just, uh, I just it's just a quick, simple way to make your brush stroke sort of grow uh, sequentially and gradually, you know? So we'll do the same thing again. Just make it a little bit larger over here on the left of the frame. Hold down shift. Click one time. Do the same thing on the right side of the frame. Hold down shift. Click
click one time. Heck, I can go a little bit more to the left. Hold down shift. Increase the size. Click one time. And I think that's good there. So I'm going to I'm going to turn off this mask, the red mask that we have there. I'm going to turn the exposure back just a little, just a little like so. And then I'm going to take the color temperature here just as if I were going to adjust the white balance and I'm going to cool it off a little more and see if it gives me a little bit of a blue glow. And as I pull it all the way back, you see it does. It pretty much made the whole street blue. I don't want that much, but I like the idea of it. of just a little bit of glowing coming from those lights. So I'm just pulling it back just a touch, but not too much. Something along those lines here, say about negative 20 or so. I think that looks pretty good. And I can continue to play around with these other adjustments here, such as the dehaze. If I do a dehaze on it, it's going to give it more contrast and wipe it out. I don't want that much contrast. I want it to glow. So I'm going to add just a little bit of haze, just a little. OK. Clarity again is going to give it too much contrast. So you have to be careful. There we go. Just a little bit. Let's cool it off a little bit more. Yeah, looks good. All right, so that's it for the adjustment brush. Now there's one more thing that I can do, and this is a bit more of a global thing. You can take this noise reduction option and really crank up the noise reduction, and it's gonna give it a softer look overall. So I'm cranking it up to a little more than halfway. All right, and you can see that it got rid of the noise there in the sky that picked up in the background because again, you're shooting with a smartphone camera, much smaller sensor, and in the low light, it's gonna just have a lot of noise in low light. It is what it is. But by doing so, that smoothed out a little bit of everything, and I don't want it to smooth out totally everything, so let's go back and give it a little bit more clarity where it needs it, like so. Like so, yeah. Now we're talking, now we're talking. And maybe I smoothed it out a little too much. Let's bring it back just a nudge. There we go. I think this is going to work, y'all. So now, uh, one more thing that I can look at, uh, it, it, it's not required, but you can play around with some of these actual uh, positioning settings of your frame. And here you see this transform menu and there's vertical, horizontal, rotate aspect and so forth. What happens if I move this vertical slider? I want to increase it just a little bit. See what it does? It changes the perspective. And I like this um, because it's it's sort of reminiscent of a lot of the wide angle uh, lenses that are used in architectural photography, you start to get a little bit of a bowing effect. Um, sometimes it looks OK. Sometimes it looks warped. So if I go too much, it it might look a little too weird. So I'm just going to barely move it. Because as you watch the street sign here right in front of us here in the frame on the right, it looks like the street sign is going to fall over. This is what it normally is. So I want to push it just a little bit. Not too much. There we go. I think that works. And now we have this border around the edge because we cha changed it. So we need to crop and get rid of that white border. There we go. I dig that. And then finally finish it off with a little bit of a vignette because that vignette will put all of the focus onto the center of the frame where you are standing here at the bottom of the scene, looking straight up to this building. And then you, you see the light post and then you see this gentleman or person <laughs> over here on the left walking towards it. It just, I absolutely just love this shot, Miko. This, this is, this is great. So let me see if I can give you a quick before. All right. So this is a before over here on the left and this is an after over here on the right. Matter, matter of fact, we'll just do it up on the screen uh, with Mr. Victor's help. So this is a before. And this is the after. All right. So, folks, that was mm, 
so much fun to see that. And, and, and it's a lot of fun to think back to the days of the smartphone photographers community. I'll put a link in our show notes to one of our videos. And it's just one of my old discussions. So it was a lot of fun. But it's nice to know that th these phones that we carry around, they are really, really good at photography and they make it super easy for anyone to use them and create some amazing shots. And again, like I said, to start the show, if you just have some intention with your photography, when you take your, your camera out, any camera, you can really create some shots. Mr. Miko had some intentions with this shot. He looked out here and saw the beautiful lighting all over the place. He saw the water uh, from the previous rain and it's like, oh, this is magical. I'm getting my camera. And he snapped a shot and it came out just absolutely beautiful. All right. OK, so that's going to do it for this week's folk, this week's show, folks. Thank you all so much for all of the continued support. One of these days, I'm going to figure out how to speak properly. <laughs> if you have any questions, feedback, comments, image critiques, feel free to do like Miko and everybody else has been doing. Send an email to hop at twit.tv. Again, that's hop at twit.tv. I try to answer them as fast as I can. Um, I do answer every single one of them. I do try to answer them as fast as I can. And if you would like to have your image shown on the show, make sure you mention in there that I do have your consent to show damage. I don't want to share it without your written consent. All right. Thank you all again for the tremendous support. We're going to go ahead and get on up out of here. So now you all safely create and dominate. And I will catch you next time. Y'all take care. No ads, just the content. That's what you get when you join Club Twit. You even get extras like Twit Plus, our new bonus feed just for members, and exclusive access to the Club Twit Discord community. Join now for just $7 a month and support Twit as we continue to create top-notch podcasts you expect and deserve. I'm just getting started, so be one of the first to join as we build Club Twit from the ground up. You could be an early member. Go to twit.tv slash club twit to learn more and sign up now. Thanks.